Hey guys welcome back to my channel if you like the video make sure to subscribe to my channel let's begin. Chapter 1. That's all she could think, she was betrayed. By the man she loved, her friends, her family. Now she lies in the murky bloody waters, feeling broken and forgotten. It's been perhaps 350 days, maybe more, she lost count after the first hundred days. The wind howled. She didn't know if it were the screams of the damned or actual wind but she couldn't tell the difference anymore. The crooked dark trees loomed over her and the crows that watched her fate mocked her. The sky above was painted red, and ugly clouds spread across the endless abyss. Yes that's where she lied. In this endless abyss of hell. Until she dies. Over, and over, and over, and over, again. She doesn't know what day she gave up fighting. What day she stopped caring. When she lost her morals, her endless life drowning in sorrow and agony, and her hate grew, day by day. Thud crash. It was coming. Just like it always did after a couple of hours, her dooming fate. But she did not budge, nor blink an eye. Her skin has lost all of its color. She was pale as the ones that live in the ground. No longer a beautiful angel that glowed with purity and light. The light that was ripped away from her, just like her wings. THUD crack she breathed softly. Barely breathing at all. Her tears have permanently stained her face. What day did she stop crying? Did she ever stop? She couldn't remember once again. Her long hair fanned out lifelessly. It looked darker than normal. She thought it was lighter before taking more of a blue tint. But now it looks as dark as her world that she now resides in. Thud snap her beautiful white gown that she wore was now painted red from the bloody lake she lies in. Her eyes see nothing. They are but empty looking clear than white. Who was she? Could she even call herself Hanada anymore? If she could see herself she would probably scream in horror. She was a stranger to herself. She had lost herself. Days ago. Many more than that. But again, she couldn't remember. Crack ee 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 a beastly noise pierced the sky. Her death was but a few feet away from her. She saw its long spider-like legs that towered over the gruesome woods, and she welcomed it. Maybe this time, she'd actually die. She'd much prefer hell than whatever place this was. Maybe the devil wouldn't be as cruel. She closed her eyes and breathed deeply, taking in the salty and rotting air. Just a few more minutes, or was the beast slower than that? She usually could tell when it was time. 20191817 Stab, Bleg. She coughed up blood and watched as the ground where she lied moved away from her. E, the beast screeched in delight. She mad have been a couple seconds off. She smirked as the blood from her pierced body dripped to ground. As the best lifted her in the air to be devoured she could have mistaken seeing a shadowy figure standing on the outskirts of the woods. She had never seen it before but then again her mind could be playing tricks on her. It was the same outcome every time. Not once had she seen anything else in the first couple of hours before she died. Not unless she got up. How interesting. Kalek and everything was dark gasp and there she was again. On the ground in the bloody lake. Awaiting to be devoured again. Is this day 351? She finally spoke with her cracked voice. She began to giggle maniacally to herself. For the first time she was surprised to hear another chuckle. It wasn't enough for her to get up or even bat an eye but enough for her to raise a brow. I think this is day 451. A dark voice called, really? My my my, she whispered. Maybe the voice was in her head. Nothing here speaks. They all screech and yip like beast. You are pretty interesting you know that? The voice spoke again after a long while. I've been watching you. For maybe 50 days or so. You lie there. Die then you lie there again. And well you know the rest. Quite a life isn't it? Yes. Quite. Such a beautiful angel such as you. Tossed away. He whispered as if to a child. Crack ee 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 funny she didn't even notice the beast was already upon her. So. Are you going to die forever? Over and over again to that beast? He asked curiously. I've tried to leave once. Twice. A few times. I always end up back here. Either I die to this beast or some other cruel twisted beast that roams this dark place. Ah. Such a sad fate. And what of those, who betrayed you? The broken angel said nothing. All she could feel was rage. 
her nails digging into her palms, producing blood. What of them bletch? E e e e e e e e e. She rose above the ground and she saw the figure for the first time. He was devilishly handsome, blonde beautiful locks, dark red eyes, whiskers that looked too harsh for such a gorgeous face. He wore no shirt revealing his chest that was disgracefully scared. A deep gash across each chest and many more little scars scattered amongst his body. He wore dark red loose pants with weird black markings on them. But most importantly she noticed the bushy fox tail and ears. His tail swayed side to side in a lazy manner. He sat on a fallen tree with his foot propped up and an arm slung over his knee, gazing up at her with a wide grin. Quelch gasp. What do you want from me? Ah. Hanada. Hanada. It's not what I want from you. It's what you want from me. Hum. What if I told you the people that damned you to hell are happily getting married and having children? Laughing joking. Eating till their bellies are plump. They don't care about poor Miss Angel who saved them. The angel that had gave it her all to grace them with such luxuries. They didn't parade your name around like the goddess you are. No. They sent you here to suffer. After all you did for them. Such cruelty. Such injustice. The man went on like he was in a play. Oh my sweet angel. He was now kneeling beside her with a wild smile that stretched across his face. I want you to get your revenge. And how do you know I want revenge? The fox boy licked his lips deliciously, of course you want revenge. That's why you are still here. It's what's keeping you alive. You have powers I've never seen before. They were afraid of you. That's why you are here. The great scholars told your loving man that in order for him to be king he had to get rid of you. For prophecy said that one day a dark angel would bring the wrath like no other. The man reached his hand down to grace Hanada's face, his finger tracing her jawline like a lover from her chin and back up to put a strand behind her ear. His sharp claws nipped her ear drawing blood, but she was unmoved. The man brought his finger to his mouth to slowly lick the blood off. You shall be the one Hanada. It was always going to be you. The one that helped bring peace on earth. Crack ee 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 the fox's ears twitched at the ugly sound. He moved slowly to show her his clenched fist. Staring at her he opened his hand to reveal a glowing orb. Inside it she saw the man who she had loved. Fought for, laid with, the one that betrayed her. Getting married to another woman. The smiles the laughter that cheers the happiness tore her apart. She heaved like an animal rising up. Her tears began to fall but they were black. Her fist shook by her side and she unleashed a scream. The dress that she wore fell a bit off her shoulders revealing the place her wings once were. E e e e e e e e the spider-like legs reached for her and she slashed out releasing burst of energy tearing the beast to shreds in one blow. The blood of the beast rained down on them in a sickly fashion. All the while the demon fox grinned in satisfaction, he bowed his head to her. Let me serve you. My queen. He looked up to her offering his hand like a servant. Her breast heaved like it was about to burst but she looked at the demon fox and gave him her hand. Gingerly he kissed each finger with passion. The world would rue the day they betrayed their angel. Think agony kind of if you ever seen that game. That's pretty much what the place kind of looks like. Okay. This will be dark. But please review this is going to be a long story. I know you might have a lot of questions but you gotta continue reading to find out. I like writing dark stories I don't know why. Hanada will be crack but she was Hanada in the beginning and there still is some of her in there. Somewhere yeah but anyways this is about how she was betrayed by the people she saved and helped and she got nothing. Now she's going to pretty much fuck shit up but we will see how it goes. I am still going to update Feisty Love and Forgotten. Chapter 2. Two bloody figures walked through the crooked forest. Any deformed animal that lunged at them was ripped to shreds. What a way to get to know each other I. The fox boy laughed running backwards. A mutated wolf with two heads jumped in front of them making the fox stop but not turn around. Hum and what is my loyal servant's name? She said loyal with disgust. Hanada, R O O O O O O O A R. The beast began to charge at them but before it could lay a finger on any of them, the fox's bushy tail separated into nine tails stabbing the wolf and lifting it high. He tossed it to the side without a care in the world. Name's Naruto. And I am your loyal servant. He stepped closer to Hanada faces but a mere inch away. 
I know you were betrayed by your people but I would never do that to you. And why is that? Your anger and fury. It does something to me. He breathed deeply like he was taking in the smell of some delicious food. Hanada had a tilt to her head and an amused expression to match. Well, my one love betrayed me. So why should I trust a fox demon? She whispered. I will do anything for you. I won't even let anything lay a hair on you. He moved to push hair over her shoulder gracing her slender shoulder. Because you and me. Aren't so much different. Nnndi just get off on mayhem baby. He smirked. Before Hanada could speak another deranged wolf lunged at them from the bushes. Rua Arg Naruto stabbed the wolf just like the other one and tossed it. Ahem, Hanada looked down at her cheek where blood had splatter on her already bloodied figure. Oops sorry about that. Naruto grinned gently wiping the blood off her cheek, making it more messy than clean. A slow smile graced her face as she stared at the insane fox in front of her. But she let it disappear quickly. She would not allow herself to be fooled so easily. But what more did she have to lose at this point? I see. She let her gaze linger on his eyes as she stepped around him to continue their way to this so-called castle Naruto was telling her about. Never had she seen a castle. But she had also never gotten this far either. It was funny walking through the forest. You could never tell when the next day started or ended. Usually every day she was revived. So that's how she tried to count them but in the beginning she did her best to not die. How could she tell what time it was? There was no sun no moon. No nothing. She hated this place. After her incident with the spider that devoured her half the time she'd been here, she couldn't shake this weird feeling in her heart. Her body felt strange, not like it did before, and that burst of dark energy? She was not aware of the powers she had at all. Most of her powers consisted of healing or even light power. But this? It was like her blood was boiling and ready to explode. She hadn't seen dark energy like that and didn't know she was capable of it. Hanada was no fool she knew she was powerful. But her light powers were conjured up with happiness and the need to do good. When she was with him, she felt this warmness spread through her body. Her love knew no boundaries. She fought for him and did what she could. She made the ground sprout flowers where she walked, the crops grow where she danced, the sick spring out of bed when she sing. She healed wounds that were thought to be fatal. Everything she did for all of them. Her friends as well. To save her people well not her people anymore. But everything she did her powers would come to her aid to help them. When she was thrown into the dark all those powers went away. She had thought it was because her wings were gone. But she's starting to understand now. Her hatred that grew also made her stronger. Her power source was her hatred for the disgraceful man she called her love. And of course all the others. In other words she was mad at the world. She balled up her fist in anger allowing the feeling to take over her. And now he marries another. That other woman who she once healed side by side with. The one who was her friend. How could this have happened? All the times they shared. The times they traveled together. Was it all for nothing? The long nights. The pain they shared when they lost someone close. All for nothing. Did they not matter? She punched a nearby tree causing it to burst. Black tears were running down her cheek. She stared at her hand and opened and closed it. She didn't feel that warmth that made her skin tingle. It was something else. It made her body feel more delightful. She began to laugh. You are starting to understand your power a little more. Naruto said eyeing the now destroyed tree. She turned to face him with a crooked smile. Yes. And if you have been. Watching me. Then you must know a little bit more about my powers. Ah. Just a bit but that's because I can feel it. It makes me. Dot all giddy. He shivered. It's time to put it to the real test though. He pointed in the direction she destroyed the tree revealing a black castle. Blood was spewing out of holes and into the moat. Shall we my queen? He smirked at her and bowed. Hanada nodded and before she knew it she had been swept off her feet. A small gasp escaping her lips. She held on to Naruto's neck as he bent down for a leap. Hanada couldn't help but stare at his face in awe. She's been down here for so long she forgot what it felt like to touch another human being or in this case demon. She could feel this burning sensation where her hands were, behind his neck and his exposed chest. Up we go. He leapt into the air with such grace. Woohoo. He yelled as they came crashing down to the other side. 
Naruto placed Hinata on her feet but she did not step away. Her hands splayed out on his chest. She could feel his beating heart. Hinata breathed deeply at this warmth. Staring at where her hand was. It was like she could feel everything. The blood that coursed through his veins. The air he took. The muscles that moved. Everything. It felt like electricity sparked beneath her fingertips and everywhere she touched on his body. She had not noticed this earlier when he had grabbed her hand to kiss it but this was weird. She dragged her hands down his chest and Naruto let out a moan making her stop at his gash. Hanada slowly brought her gaze to his stern looking face. It seemed weird on him because of his silly attitude. But the electricity she was feeling was quite, loving. It tingled like little kisses and it seemed to be having a heavy affect on Naruto. His ears twitched and his tail swooshed. His hand was over her right hand in a flash when she tried to drag her hand further. Her lips pursed and she narrowed her eyes. Is my loyal servant denying me his flesh? Once again the fox had surprised her making her heart skip a beat. A smile began to crawl on his face, wider and wider, and his nose lifted in almost a snarl. Denying. You have no idea how much I would love to stick this, he quickly brought her hand down to his hardened cock. He squeezed her hand over it tightly and leaned closer to her to whisper in her ear, inside you. But my sweet angel let's save the foreplay for later. Hanada blinked her eyes a couple of times before a small blush crept on her skin. It felt warm and it took not only her but him by surprise too. Her eyes showed nothing however. So why was she blushing? Didn't these emotion die along with her old self? But despite that she stared him in the eye not backing down. Trust me. I don't want to play anyway, she pulled her hand away. We will see about that, he challenged bursting the castle doors open. Hanada held onto her hand walking behind the fox. What was that delicious electricity? And better yet, who was producing it? But she kept her mouth shut for now. Sex never crossed her mind. Well maybe it did but she could only imagine what it would feel like if she had him inside her. Would it electrify her like it did with just a touch? Hanada breathed deeply. Now was not the time. Not when she's so close to escape. She longed to see the sun the sky. Even the moon though it is not as dark as this place. So she will keep this little fox by her side for a while, if he promised her freedom. She didn't want to get too happy however. She thought about how this could all be a dream and how the fox could be tricking her. Maybe he is the devil and he came to claim her soul after all those days. Naruto walked to a huge door before stopping and tossing a grin at Hanada. I got you here, but it's up to you to get out of here. He opened the door and all she could see was black. He stood there holding the door open. Go on in. Don't be shy. He smiled. She gave him a hesitant look before stepping inside the darkness. Slam. Hanada slightly turned her head to stare at nothing. It was too dark to see and without the bit of light from the door she couldn't even see what was in front of her. Had Naruto betrayed her? Where was she? W who's tea there? A voice yelled in the dark. Hanada walked towards the voice trying find who it was that spoke. She didn't know why she was trying to find it but something about that voice. S stay away. It sobbed. Hanada stopped walking, listening to the voice. Something sounded. Too familiar. She walked on. Stay away. A burst of white light shot at her and she was blasted away. A pain shot in Hanada's chest but she's felt worse. She held on to her chest and got up with a groan. Even though she felt worse it still hurt. A bright light appeared again and Hanada gasped. Both Hanadas. There she was standing there in her white dress. Not at all stained with red. Was it always that beautiful? It flowed on her like she was a goddess. Her dark blue hair flowed with life behind her. Her white eyes glowed with warmth. Her red lips looked plump. And her skin glowed. After a moment of staring the Hanada that she looked like before started screaming. Well of course she did. She had blood and guts all over her and in places she didn't know it could be. She slowly stood and her shoulders began to shake. She looked down and her bangs covered her eyes. The light the other Hanada held was shot at her. Gee get away. She yelled, W who are you? She threw another one. Each one hit Hanada shooting her backward. She lied there for a long moment. How comical. How crudely comical. Just the other day she thought how she would scream if she saw herself, outstanding. Life was a funny thing. Life was full of surprises. And she was getting tired of it. 
tired of it all. For once she wanted to be in control. She will be the one to laugh in life's face. Her shoulders continued to shake. She slowly got up and when she did she laughed, and laughed, and laughed. She possibly sounded like a witch. You are pathetic. Hanada threw a dark ball her way and she countered it with one of her light ones. Why you are evil. I won't allow why you to kill me. And that blood what kind of monster are you? I'm you, you idiot. The two women threw energy balls at each other back and forth running around in the dark area. Though Hanada's orbs were dark they still illuminated some light. M me, impossible, such sea cold eyes, you are evil. More orbs were tossed back and forth, one got the good Hanada on her shoulder and she cried out in pain. Pathetic you, you know no pain. Hanada unleashed a stream of darkness from her hands in anger. The good Hanada also released a blast from her hand creating a battle of energy dark and light. I can't die here I must get back to my people. That did it how dare she. People. Hanada hissed, your people sent you here you ignorant fool. And no. I know there's a mistake. I will talk to him I will get the truth. T. Tonary would never betray me. We fought side by side. All those years. I'm his angel. Ah. Hanada screamed maliciously she was tired of hearing this ignorance. Tired of hearing it all. It was what she used to tell herself in the beginning. She couldn't handle the truth. But now that she was shown that. Wedding. Oh she will kill them now. No one was mourning for her. No one cared. She will destroy them. Destroy them all. I will. Kill. Them. Even if it means I have to kill you. Boom the blast of energy exploded sending both Hanadas flying. Neither one of them moved for a while. You're as sick. W what happened to you? The light Hanada whispered. The other Hanada began to crawl to the light one, and then she slowly got up. When you die. Over and over again. You begin to wonder the true meaning of life. Life is what you make it, she walked towards the other Hanada on the ground. Taking slow steps. I lost whatever part of me was left. You are what was left of me. I am broken. W we are broken. She stopped over the girl and saw the fresh tears in her eyes. The dark Hanada fell to her knees and caressed her face. I've cried for days. Begging for my life to end. But it never did. And here I am. So what is the point? What am I supposed to do? All that powers me now, is the sweet sweet revenge. Maybe then. I can close my eyes in peace. I I pity you. The girl said between sobs. Yeah well don't. And with that Hanada stabbed the girl in the heart grabbing it and squeezing the life out of it. The girl's mouth shot open and stayed that way in shock. The coldest look took a hold of Hanada's face and she smiled with glee, bringing the blood to her tongue. The darkness began to spin and the girl on the floor turned black and then to dust. The darkness started to shoot at her one by one. All the darkness was being absorbed in her body and she screamed in pain. It burned. She felt like her body was on fire on the inside. All the darkness was becoming one with her. She screamed at the top of her lungs and writhed in pain. Her body appeared to be having a seizure and she cried out louder and louder until she could not feel any more and her world faded away from her. Did she die? Well this meant she was going to be right at the beginning. In that bloody water. It was always what welcomed her when she first woke. I wonder if Naruto will be there. The first thing she felt was warmth. It started on her face and spread to the rest of her body. She then heard a noise. A weird sound. Is that? Could it be? Chirp chirp tweet tweet tweet. Whoosh. Whoosh. Her hands moved a little at her side to feel the soft grass underneath her. Her eyelids moved and then fluttered open. Instinctly her bloody cacked hands flung up to protect her eyes from the blinding sun that peered through the trees above. A leaf was blown out of the tree and was gracefully falling to her. She reached out to catch it. Hanada turned it to and fro, staring at how green it was. A light giggle escaped her lips. A handsome face appeared above her with a grin. Mornin' beautiful. Naruto. She whispered. I forgot. She swallowed the lump in her throat. I forgot how beautiful it was. A black tear slid to the side of her face. Staining the grass below. Meh that other place may have been better. He joked before jumping down next to her. He lied there side by side with his hands behind his head. Can we sit and enjoy this moment? For just a little while. She whispered looking at him. 
He smiled. And here I thought you'd be tired of lying around. He smirked. She laughed a bit before scooting her head next to him. She sighed and looked back at the blue sky. She was free. Chapter 3 there was a middle-aged man fishing in front of his cabin. There usually wasn't much in the lake but it was relaxing to sit out and fish. He was a bit pudgy and had a gray beard covering most his face. A hat to block out the sun and he wore loose pants in a tight white shirt. The man sighed as he threw the line out into the water. He stretched and got comfortable, reaching for his bucket. Maybe today he will get lucky. A pull. Margaret. Margaret. What? A woman about the same age as the man came from around the small cabin. She was holding a basket to her hip. The basket was filled with big red apples. She hurried to her husband's side as her long dress dragged on the ground. Margaret was a bit slimmer than her husband but she had gray hair to match his. Her cheeks were red from being out in the sun too long. I got one. Oh get ready now. The man jumped up reeling the fish in. Oh Lord John the fish are smaller than my god damn hand. Well it's better than your damn apples woman. What? Say that to my face you old coot. You won't touch a single slice of pie when I am done. The old couple bickered but didn't see the looming figures watching them. Screw you. Right back at you you cranky old man. The woman went into the cabin slamming the door behind her. Damn woman. Only thing she do good is lie on her back. The man plopped back down, his fish getting away. The birds chirped to one another and the wind played a song. But the quietness was rudely interrupted. Ah! A shrieking scream pierced the air. The man dropped his pole whipping his head to the cabin. A terrified face took a hold of him. The scream making his stomach drop and his heart clench. Sweat was already forming on his forehead. It was a pitiful scream, and it came from his wife. Margaret. He shouted running to his cabin. He tripped a few times and scrambled to the door, fear shaking him to his core. Margaret. When he bust in the door he stopped and stared. The sight he saw made him paralyzed, his mouth slowing open in horror. A young man with bright blonde hair and whiskers was holding his wife. He had red fox ears on his head and a lazy bushy tail poked up in attention. It separated into nine tails and then back to one. He was covered in blood and God he hoped it wasn't his wife's blood. He was holding his wife with a sickening grin, his wife was in a headlock with a loose grip. The fox boy did not worry about the woman getting away. He had enough strength to blow up the house for all he cared. Margaret's bosom raised with a shaky breath and flattened with a scared wheeze. Her eyes as wide as a deer. She stared at him, begging him for help with her eyes, for him to do anything anything at all to save her. Her hands were over the arm around her throat not trying to pull it away but shaking over it. She knew she was no match. She was so scared she could barely feel the gash in her stomach from when the demon boy clawed at her. But her husband saw the blood. Dripping to the floor and soaking the front of her dress like she had just lost a baby. The demon boy pressed his cheek up to the woman's face rubbing his to hers in mocking way. Is it true what ya say? She's good on her back eye. He smiled poking at one of his canines with a tongue. His other hand played with a button on her blouse suggestively. Why you g g g get o off h her her d d e e. The man was so scared he could barely speak. Nothing could leave his mouth. It was the nine-tailed fox. Of all evils in the world, the nine-tailed fox was the worse. Destruction and chaos was what he fed off on. He loved it. Craved it. He heard stories about him but never, in his wildest dreams did he think that he would meet him. All the demons and monsters he thought were locked away for good. The old king himself had locked them away. The ones that weren't locked away were so afraid of the king that they stayed hidden. Suppose that was only a rumor. The fox had lived a long long time ago and then went to sleep for eternity, so he thought. What had awakened him? One rumor that did float around was the fact that the demon boy was in fact a cannibal. But how? How was he here? T the K King. We'll get you for this. Naruto was still rubbing his face on the woman, but now he added a lovely sway, as if to dance to some romantic music. The woman shuddered moaning in distress. He even began to hum a beautiful melody, spinning the woman around and back in his clutches. He was sick. Beyond sick. The old man lunged for his sword that sat on the side. 
He had thought he was so quick the demon didn't even notice but wrong he was. Oh no. Naruto faked being shocked. His tail swooshed quickly as if he was startled. You put her down demon boy, or I'll kill ya, he spat. Naruto poked out his lip, ah don't kill me that's not nice. The man raised his sword up, he hadn't fought in years, he didn't think he'd ever need the sword again after the peace that spread over the land. He stepped forward a shaky foot into the blood on the floor, knocking into an apple. I am warning you, he yelled raising the sword up in a fighting stance. A shadow blocked the light that shone through the door. The man noticed and turned his head a bit, not trying to take his eyes off the fox. What he saw about gave him a heart attack. A bloodied woman with long hair sticking to her figure, with a dress that stuck to her as well due to all the blood on her. Her eyes. Those yes looked soulless. And the world seemed darker around her. Something about her scared him. It was haunting. Terrifying. Even more than the fox. It was like she was producing a dark aura that he could feel. It made him whimper and drop to his knees, his sword clattering to the ground. D dark. A angel. He whispered like it was a forbidden word. It was the dark angel. And she had brought her fox pet to bring wrath upon the world. The prophecy. It was true it was true. Someone anyone. Save him save him. Hanada looked at the scene in amazement. Why was this man cowering before her? It was very opposite from before when people would smile and come forth with joy. But it was different this time, it was like. His fear was feeding her. She felt a chill. She took a slight breath, smelling the fear roll off him. He was more scared of her than Naruto, and she wasn't even doing anything. She let a giggle escape her lips. Naruto, I am going to take a dip in the lake. When you are done we can talk about what we should do next. I I my queen. He shouted gleefully. Hanada watched for a minute as the man cowered on the ground in a prayer and the woman in Naruto's arms began to full-blown cry. She swayed a bit on one foot and then to the other, before finally leaving. It was an interesting feeling. Different. But interesting. She almost wanted to watch. Actually she did want to watch. But she moved away from the cabin, and let the screams fill her ears. She hummed softly, looking at the sky as she undressed. She allowed her dress to fall to the ground and pool around her feet. Standing on the edge of the lake she let her toes take a dip. She hummed louder and then began to sing to herself. Walking further into the water, her arms outstretched like a goddess. The water around her instantly began to change colors, and she swayed in, dancing and singing. Her voice beautiful but the song sounding oh so sinister. She danced around in the water, feeling every bit of it, her arms moved and the water followed. She began to turn and the water lifted above her, spinning along with her. And finally she plopped down into the water, letting the water rain on her. And she finished her song with a hum and sigh. She felt Naruto's presence, enjoy your meal. She heard him burp. Well, not as much. They were kind of old tasting. But that song, I enjoyed that song a lot. Hanada looked over her shoulder. Naruto was standing by her dress. He had an odd twinkle in his eyes. In his hand a bone and he was picking his teeth with it. It's a beautiful song. Honestly, you sound like an angel. Hanada began to chuckle hiding behind her hand. A blush reaching her cheeks. She enjoyed Naruto's presence very much. She could get used to him. No really. He laughed kicking off his pants. Hanada looked away however. Thank you Naruto. She reached up to wash her hair but her wrists were grabbed by the fox's tails. A queen should nt have to wash her own hair. He was now behind her. She could feel his hands on her shoulder. His tails let her hands go and Ray treated. He traced his hands up her slender neck and into her hair pulling it together. He began to scrub her hair as she lowered herself into the water. She sighed in comfort. It was relaxing having Naruto wash her hair. An ugly caw sounded throughout the woods making Hanada and Naruto look up. There were crows in the trees hiding. But they could see them. If she wasn't mistaken they had red eyes. Was that normal for a bird? Don't worry about it my queen. Naruto said continuing to scrub her hair. But there was something weird about the crows. She glared at them before. Hanada what was that? It was like the crow spoke in her mind. Naruto noticed Hanada looking at the crow curiously. Hey don't talk to her. Hanada wa Hanada jumped up confused she looked between Naruto and the crow. What was going on? 
Naruto sighed. You just had to ruin my moment, Hateme. Naruto had his arms crossed in a pout. Naruto, please explain what's going on. Naruto sighed like a child. All right, all right. He finished scrubbing himself and washing the blood out his hair. Hanada Hanada glanced at the bird again and its ugly caw reached her ears. Shut up T.E.M.E. How come I can hear him? Can he hear me? Hanada followed Naruto out the lake his tail swooshing side to side irritated. No, it's only if you allow it. You have a protective barrier around your mind so we can't dig into it and manipulate you. Which is what the Teme is trying to do. The T Teme? They walked inside the cabin dripping with water. Blood was all over the floor and the couple were lying side by side with their stomachs open. With a permanently horrified face, mouths in O's. Naruto went to the small bedroom rummaging through clothes. He tossed her a dress and prache edit to put on the mons clothes. Baggy pants and a baggy white shirt. So we blend in more, we don't need the king knowing about us just yet. Naruto. Hanada said impatiently putting on the long dress that reached her feet and puffed out a bit. Naruto huffed again. The teme is Sasuke Uchiha. Hanada looked at him sternly, waiting for more explanation. Why is he trying to manipulate me? Naruto shrugged going out into the open area. Oh come on. The crow was now at the bodies pecking around and cawing. I was gonna eat that. What do you want from me? Hanada asked the crow. It's not gonna talk back to you. Sasuke has no true power right now. The only thing left of him are his crows. He's been trying to get some poor soul to release him. He can't do much but try to hypnotize people. Naruto said plopping down in a chair. What is he? No normal human can do that. He's, I, uh, well was, the vampire king. Vampire? King? Wow. She was not on earth when the vampires were around. But the vampire king himself is trying to get her to save him. He seemed like a powerful ally. Boot, he's trapped right now. Honestly I'm surprised those crows are still around. Then I will have to release him. Huh. He looked up at her with shocked eyes. Well I need people right. What is a queen without people? She looked at Naruto with a small smile. Yeah I suppose. But we can't get anyone else. Why the teme? Does he scare you? No. That bastard is annoying as hell. He gets on my nerves. Naruto's ears were furiously moving about. Hanada smiled petting his head gently. It's okay Naruto. He will be just a pawn. She bent down to kiss him on the forehead, and you my humble servant. She brought his chin up with a soft push of her fingertips. She leaned forward to place a quick kiss to his lips before moving away. Naruto smiled. Well I can't say no after that now can I? He watched as she walked away graciously. He let a sly tongue slip across his lips. He got up and looked at his mess. Thanks for the clothes, he called out picking up an apple dripping with blood. Chapter 4 Hanada and Naruto walked down a dirt path. The green leaves fell gracefully down, resting on the path. They must have been in the land of fire, it was always lush and green there. Hanada's guessed that it was summertime. The sun was warm and there was a soft breeze. Ka. Hungry for another. Hanada asked the bird that perched on her shoulder. She was carrying hers and Naruto's things in a basket. Apples and fruits sat on top of their clothes. She grabbed a grape and held it up to the bird. He hungrily grabbed it with its beak throwing its head back to swallow it. Ka. Naruto watched Hanada as she fed the bird with a hidden smile. He was always watching her honestly. She was intriguing. And her darkness that surrounded her was even better. He could tell that she was getting used to it. Not yet there but a newborn dark angel. He couldn't wait to see what she will become. And what destruction she'd bring forth. He shivered at this thought. Patience though. He had to be patient. He waited this long for her. He could wait even longer until she blossoms. He stopped sniffing the air. He tenses up suddenly as if frozen. His bushy tail disappeared slowly, along with his ears. Hanada stopped watching his ears as they went back into his head. He looked at her with a smirk. All right your turn. What do you mean? Well, Naruto skipped ahead a bit before whipping around facing her. He got in a squat and put his fingers up making a square shape. One eye was closed as he looked at her through his square. You look beautiful to me but you might scare off the villagers before we even get in there. The crow has to go and your aura has to be sealed. We gotta fit in like a couple. He smirked. 
Off you go. Hanada patted the bird and it flew up into the trees. And what do you mean about my aura? Like a. Uh, the darkness that you're putting off. You gotta take it down a notch. Hanada glanced around a bit confused. Naruto sighed putting his hands down onto his knees. You know how that guy was scared of you. Well it's because you are producing some of your darkness. Not a lot of it but just some. I'm sure you felt different, right? Hanada thought about this before she looked at him even more confused. Well yeah, but how do I do that? Okay. Naruto jumped up making his way towards Hanada. He placed his hands on her shoulders, close your eyes, and breath. Hanada closed her eyes and took a deep breath. Now I want you to kind of imagine like a container of some sort. You gotta conceal your powers. Bring it all together like it's at the center of your core and reel it in. Focus on breathing. Like each inhale it's getting smaller and smaller. Radiating into one position. Hanada did as such breathing deeply, exhaling and inhaling, imagining a box. She felt like the world was moving around her, being absorbed into her. Good. You're doing it. Atta girl. Now try to close the lid. Seal it off. Hanada scrunched up her eyes, trying to do just like Naruto instructed. It felt like her stomach flipped upside down. She let out a breath and opened her eyes to meet the clear blue ones that stared down at her. Your eyes? Were they always so blue? Well it won't do us any good if I'm walking in with eyes as red as the devil's ass now will it? Hanada let out a giggle at Naruto's twisted humor. Well I suppose you look innocent, sort of. Now you look like an innocent woman, off we go honey. Naruto gave her his arm so she could wrap hers around his. They walked together as Naruto whistled a tune. The village was a bit small. But one could see that it was growing. People walked about cheerfully. The village was alive, for it was early morning. People were off to do work and chores. It was just one of the many villages that prospered from the war. What are we doing here Naruto? Hanada whispered. Well I don't know about you but uh, I don't want to walk to save the jackass. How far is it? Quite far dear. The two dodged another herd of people, breaking through the crowd. Fresh fish sir. Caught em today. No thanks. Naruto smiled, ushering Hanada away from the calling money seekers. Who far? How about far north? The team's castle is lost within a forest. In the land of darkness. No one can find it but I'm sure that bird will bring us to him. Oh that's not bad. Yeah I bet when you have wings. Hanada gave Naruto a look of irritation. Not anymore. She hissed. Okay okay. Cool it babe. He patted her arm reassuringly, as if they had a little couple's quarrel. The two ventured a little further to the other side of the village to find carriages and horses. I can't believe I'm going back to the darkness. Well at least this time you will have the moon eh? Yeah I suppose. Hanada sighed as they stopped hidden by the building. Alright, sit back and watch how it's done my lady. Naruto let go of Hanada's arm and tossed her a grin before going off somewhere. She was curious to what kind of trick the trickster was going to come up with. Kaya. Oink oink oink. Bawak bwak bwak. Pigs and chickens came running down the street with people chasing after them. The men holding on to their hats and the women hiking up their dress. Hanada chuckled and before she could even question where Naruto was a horse was trotting towards her with her blonde servant. Yaha! He yelled reaching down for her. She grabbed hold fast and he swung her up on the horse without skipping a beat. Hanada quickly wrapped her arms around Naruto's waist, careful with the basket. They were both leaning a bit forward as the brown stallion galloped onward, leaping over a wooden fence. Well that wasn't very destructive, you feeling okay? Hanada chuckled. Have to keep it down a bit honey. But if you want blood guts in the galore like at the cabin, then ya gotta wait a bit. Speaking of which, what will the king think of your mess? Well hopefully he'd get off on it, like you did. With this Naruto turned his head to smirk at her, showing his pearly white teeth and that devilishly handsome smile of his. Damn him. Hanada bit her lip, he only tossed his head back and laughed. Both were silent now, listening to the trotting of the horse. She rested her head on Naruto's back, thinking of the land she once walked, but walked differently than now. The land she once flew over. The trees whipped past her in a slight blur. Kau. She glanced up to see the crow following not so far behind. Flying in the sky. 
the big blue sky like she once did. Its wings flapped methodically. She remembered. When she once was up there. There they are. Hanada glided down landing with grace. Her dark blue hair shined and waved in the wind. Her feet bare but soft. Walking barefoot had not ruined the soles of her feet. Her beautiful big eyes shone with wonder, bright. They were very bright. How far away? Toneri questioned. He was the commander of the group. His white hair shaped his face. And he wore his father's armor. Blue and yellow with the crescent of the leaf on the chest plate. His sword was hooked to his hip. A hand placed tensely over it. Not far my lord. Hanada smiled and bowed. Her white wings outstretched. Thank you Hanada. What would I do without your aid in this war? This made Hanada blush deeply. She looked up quickly blinking her eyes rapidly. My my lord, it was all you I, I only try my best. Toneri came towards her with a smile. His leathered gloved hand touched upon her cheek. She leaned into it comfortably. No Hanada. You've helped me so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, my angel. He knelt down. Placing a kiss on her lips. Then he stood drawing his sword. Let's go. The rest of the soldiers grabbed their swords raising it up as well, giving their warrior cry. Yeah. Hanada stood up watching Toneri shout orders at his men. He was a fierce leader. And brave. Hanada admired him. Hanada loved him. Hanada clenched her fist. But he didn't care for her. She was a tool. Nothing but a damn weapon. Once he was done with her he tossed her away. I love you Hanada. My angel. You mean so much to me. Lies they were all lies. Hidden by a smile and a sweet kiss. Words of meaningless nothing. Hanada. Toneri called, Hanada. His voice was distorted morphing into a different voice. Hanada. This time she realized the voice to be Naruto. She let her eyes flutter before looking up at Naruto. But what was interesting was the blue sky was no longer blue. It was gray and it looked like it was going to rain. What had happened to the sun? She looked up in surprise. It got colder as well. Was she out of it that long? Did she perhaps fall asleep? Naruto when did it get so dark and cloudy? When you started putting out your dark aura. Naruto didn't look at her but faced forward. His humorous tone not present. I I what? No way you're joking right? Nope. No jokes here. Remember that dark aura I was talking about? You started releasing a lot of it. Naruto turned to look at her and she gasped. His eyes were more red than before. His canines looked more enlarged and poked at his lip. Deep whiskers black as soot appeared on his face he licked his lips and smiled. Keep it down a bit alright. I know I'm not one to say so but geez girl. You have a lot of darkness bottled up inside you. It's seeping out. Foreplay later remember. Keep it under control. Naruto's voice sounded deep. A dark chuckle grumbled deep within. I didn't think you'd be able to make me feel like this. I can't even hold myself together. He was right. She could feel it roll off him. I felt good. She was causing this. Causing him to even lose his cool. How crazy. But she closed her eyes nodding her head in agreement. She had to get it under control. 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 She will get her revenge. And it will be sweet. To see the surprised face on Toneri. When he sees she's still alive. She couldn't wait. The horse continued on. Moving through the forest. They were on their way to recruit their fist soldier. How will this interaction be? Will he join her quietly? Or put up a fight? She couldn't wait to see what kind of character he was going to be. She just only hoped that the two will get along. Chapter 5. The horse is getting tired. Hanada spoke softly, her head lying on Naruto's back. They had been riding on for quite some time. The sun was soon to be leaving them. There was a pause of silence as they listened to the tired trots of the horse. Um, yeah. I guess I can't be that cruel, huh? Naruto pulled on the reins and headed off the dirt path in the middle of the forest. There's a creek nearby. He called as they broke open into an spacious area. The horse slowed down, panting and neighing in exhaustion. It trotted to the nearby stream and began gulping water. Naruto jumped off and helped Hanada off by grabbing her hips. He gracefully put her down, his hands still on her hips. His eyes were back to their red color. His ears popped back out and his tail swooshed freely behind him. You can relax a bit but not too much alright. He tapped under her chin before moving away. 
he began to throw off his shirt and even kicked off his pants not caring that Hanada was standing right there. Hanada glanced away and pulled out his pants that were now surprisingly dry. They are already dry? She questioned in awe. Yeah. They are kind of unique pants. I guess a having pants that dry quickly is a must. He chuckled. It just one of my many powers my super mighty pants have. Hanada laughed still looking away, but peeking a little at the boy. She was awed by the many scars on him. Each one a different cut, and each one told a different story. Being shy again? She could hear the smugness in his voice as she whipped her head to the horse. Don't worry babe, whenever you want it, it's all yours. I don't want it at all remember? She scoffed playfully. Liar liar, your pants are definitely on fire, well if you had any. His voice faded away and Hanada looked over to see him leaving. Where are you going? Scout the area, we can rest here a bit. Hanada sighed as she watched the demon disappear behind the bushes. She looked at the clothes on the ground. Kau. He's a mess isn't he? She smiled at the bird in the tree. She picked up the clothes and plopped down on a rock not far from the horse. She sat down the basket, relaxing her hands in her lap. Hanada cocked her head to the side looking at the grass beneath her feet. She wiggled her small toes a bit, and took a deep breath. She threw a glance at the sun that was slowly seeping into the land. She couldn't help but feel a sense of excitement. She was excited for what was ahead of her. Maybe she was overconfident but she was finding joy in her little adventure. No fear at all. Not like when she fought in the war. Every twist and turn all she felt was fear. Fear of what would come out of the depths of hell. And now look at her. She is that fear that crawls on people's backs and make them shake in their boots. Has she really gone insane? So far gone to enjoy what she once was afraid of. All those days locked away in that dark pit and now she's free. Happy to release the same pain she felt, but tens times worse. How interesting. It didn't matter if she lived or died at this point. She had died so many times anyway, who cares? At this thought Hanada giggles to herself tossing her head back. What fun, what fun, she spoke to the crow that now pecked around on the ground. One thing's for sure she found her partner in crime to be marvelous. She felt a sense of attraction towards him, an attraction she could not deny. Something about him made her all giddy and happy too. Such happiness found in such darkness, how weird, and she wanted him. It was like a spark lighting up every time their eyes locked onto each other. But she'd play hard to get. What's the fun in rushing? They had all the time in the world. And he seemed to enjoy the play too. She smirked as she glared at a white flower. Evil and darkness, but happiness and delight. How peculiar, yes. Hanada let another giggle slip between her lips. Indeed, she whispered, truly entertaining. She threw her arms up dramatically and fell down to the grass staring up at the darkening sky. If she was like she was before, an angel, what would have come of their meeting? Would they be enemies on the battlefield? Hanada scoffed. Of course they would, her mission was to protect the earth from evil. Naruto was definitely an evil. A very evil entity. And she liked him. Very much so. A small blush creeped on her cheeks as she imagined his toned body and abs. Something she tried to ignore even when they were bathing together. She tried to pretend that she didn't see his handsomeness, but he was beyond gorgeous. Kau. The crow flew up into the trees, its black feathers dropping to the ground. Hanada blinked a couple of times before she felt a different presence among her. She didn't bother to move but she waited for the new bodies to approach her. But they stopped, surrounding her being. Hanada pretended as though she didn't sense them and played the role of a soon-to-be damsel. She picked up the flower she was staring at and sat up with her back against the rock. She began to pick at its white petals, awaiting for her ambushers to make their move. 1. Pluck 2. Pluck 3. Pluck 4. Pluck. Hanada counted how many there were as she plucked each petal. 5. She finished plucking the last petal off with a fierce jerk of her arm. She smiled as she turned the naked flower to and fro between her fingers. She glared up at the sky as she concentrated on the senses she was feeling from the people. Big burly men who needed a good shower and shave. She felt their excitement, and a mixture of arousal. She perked up her brow as she picked up another flower. Hanada wanted them to think she was helpless. She focused on her energy like Naruto had showed her early so she didn't scare them off this time. How little did they know? 
she was only a wolf in sheep clothing. Hanato was rather excited. If only the men could see the cold, cold smirk she wore. Ya see her boss. A short beefy man asked his leader. His leader had a slight tan to him from being out in the sun they had just raided a house and look what the gods have dropped in front of them. A beauty. The leader who was tall and buff, had a toothpick in his mouth. His bald head shined and he had a beard making him look scary. A deep scar was on his cheek. His short friend looked up at him with anticipation. His other crew members that had similar appearances between him and his right-hand man were among the bushes surrounding the pretty girl. Their appearance was a mixture but none of them were as meaty and big as the leader, and none as short as the right-hand man. What a lucky day. The short man squealed. Drool practically dripped from his mouth. The tall man raised his hand up and dropped one finger at a time very slowly. When he dropped the last finger he made a fist and shook it rushing forward to their prize. Ra. Ha hua. Hey sweetie. All of them rushed forward sprouting out some creepy phrase or something that was inaudible. Eek. Hanada shrieked holding herself tightly looking about as her ambushers surrounded her. W what did you want from me? She stuttered blinking her big doe-like eyes rapidly. Her voice sounded higher pitched than normal. Each man jumped at her or snarled. Some had knives and licked the blade suggestively. Finally the leader stepped in front of her looking down at her. His huge frame blocked what was left of the sun. He knelt down and smiled sickly, licking his lips quickly. Listen here sweet stuff. You can cooperate, and things will go better for you. Or you can fight, and things will go better for M.E. He practically spat the last part at her and his crew laughed like hyenas pacing about and rubbing their junk. Oh man I've never seen such a beautiful woman. Sue hot. The two who spoke bit their thin cracked lips. Calm down fellas. I get her first. The boss looked up and gave everyone a look of authority. Hanada still whimpered holding herself, trying to make herself seem smaller. P please D don't do this. I before she could finish the man jerked her up by her arm. She yelped in pain as he held her in the air. Her feet dangling a bit above the ground, her other hand tried to pry at the man's hand around her wrist. He laughed at her weak attempt, holding onto his stomach and his crew barked too. Ooey look at those fine ass tits truant. The small man jumped looking at Hanada's bountiful breast that spilled out her dress. Hanada began to weep, please sir. But to all their surprises they stopped laughing as they watched the black tears travel down Hanada's face. Bwa? What the hell? The leader by the name of Truant lifted his other hand to catch the black tear. Is she some kind of mystical creature? The short man questioned looking at her closely. Hum. Even better. Truant yelled and everyone shrieked together throwing their arms up. M.I.B. Boyfriend W. will be back soon. Oh yeah. The man brought her close to his face, his teeth stained yellow, and where is he? Right here actually. The men turned to look at a blonde boy with red pants, his tail and ears not present. And who the hell is this wimp? The man would be lying if he said the blonde scars scattered among his chest didn't faze him. He only had one scar, this fucker had a ton. Name's Naruto old chap. Naruto bowed and looked back up with a coy smile. You fucking with this pretty boy. One of the goons spat holding up his knife. We gonna fuck your girl and you can watch. Truant yelled shaking Hanada in front of him. She mewed slightly, swinging like a rag doll. Uh. I wouldn't do that if I were you. And why's that? Truant sat Hanada down for a bit, curious to know what the boy would say. Why the hell? Would we? He pointed at everyone including himself. Be scared of you. He pointed at Naruto and smirked. Well because I'm not the one you should be scared of. She's been playing you this whole time. She's no prey, she's a fucking predator. Naruto laughed maniacally. Oh Hanada you got em good. Great acting babe holy shit. He clapped above his head like a dancing monkey. Tears in the corners of his eyes. The men were shocked and confused. What th? Hey what can I say I got bored waiting for you to scout the area. The men whipped their head to Hanada. Her voice no longer the high pitch voice. It was still sweet and sexy but what shocked them was the lack of stress. They talked like it was just a carefree day and they weren't about to rape her. Oh you are just so hot. I can't wait to fuck you. Naruto grinned crossing his arms. It's here when you want it. Hanada smiled shyly. 
she felt bold and she couldn't help to flirt with the blonde boy. Enough. I have had it with you too. Truant picked Hanada up again by the wrist. Her eyes showed nothing and she stared at him. He began to get nervous, his palms starting to sweat. You guys are playing with a lion. Naruto shrugged his shoulders, played right into her trap. The men pulled out their other weapons threateningly. They were half shitting themselves right now because of the shifting atmosphere. But they allowed their eyes to be the deal breaker. What was in front of them was some boy and a girl. Oh yeah, that cries black tears. What the fuck are you? The leader hissed in Hanada's face. A small smile spread across her face and she leaned her head to the side as if she was talking to a kid, and this man wasn't towering over her. Oh truant? I thought if I didn't cooperate it would be good for you. What's wrong? Don't want to put your sloppy meat in me. She began to chuckle and before Truant knew it, it was his hands in Hanada's grasp and she was back on the ground. Let me hear you cry. She whispered using her dark energy to crush his fist. Ah ha. Truant's scream got louder and louder as he knelt to the ground grabbing at Hanada's hand with no luck. Tears pooled from his eyes. Help me you fucking idiots. She's crushing ma fucking hands. He yelled spitting everywhere. Hanada watched with satisfaction as the other man couldn't move. All of them scared and shocked. Hanada finally let go watching as Truant clutched at his twisted fingers and whimpered on the ground. Cowering. You fucking cunt. The short man ran at her with his dagger raised. She twirled around him gracefully and he swiped at her again and again. Hanada twirled about him raising her arms and dancing around him. Her dress swinging with her as her feet pointed as she danced. She finished with spin and swung her foot up to connect with the man's face, sending him flying across. With her foot still in the air, she dropped it slowly eyeing the other men with a smirk. Who wants to dance next? All the men screamed as they charged at her. They swung their sword and knives, and axes, but with no luck. Hanada danced about them, flipping off some backs and sliding between the men gracefully. Each one falling over and getting back up to attack her. Anger and frustration ridden on their face. Hanada placed two hands on opposite attackers and flipped over them. She turned quickly and shot a blast of energy at both their backs sending them flying into the bushes. She looked at her hands as lingering dark energy smoked up into the air to disappear. The leader had finally gathered himself and grabbed her in a bear hug from behind. You bitch. He yelled trying to crush her. But before he could put pressure on her fox-like tails ripped his arms off her and him. Ah. Truant yelled looking at the empty space where his arms should be. No touching the lady. Naruto appeared in front of his face. And to everyone's horror they saw the nine tails whip about behind him. His eyes a bloody red, and his ears twitched excitedly. The tails brought an arm to the boy's face and he bit into it. Patu. Naruto spit the meat out, gross. He looked among the others as a tail whipped across their leader's neck, sending the head rolling over to the short man. Everyone screamed and scrambled to run away. Hanada watched with a curious lean to her head. We can't let them escape. Hum? I wasn't planning on it. Naruto chuckled looking at Hanada. He licked his lips and she smiled. Screams filled the woods as Naruto and Hanada chased down the last of the thieves and ripped them apart. Aw. That was fun. Naruto sighed as Hanada and him walked back to their horse. They were covered in blood once again. Hanada looked at Naruto and saw a splatter of blood on his cheek. She reached up gently to wipe it with her thumb. Bloodied again. Naruto grinned at her grabbing her hand before she could pull away. He plopped her thumb in his mouth and licked it clean. Sorry babe, get used to it. Hanada smiled softly, staring at Naruto's deep red eyes. They were beautiful to her. Others might find them scary but to her they were beautiful. She reached up for his face and on her tiptoes got close to him. Never in her life had she ever made the first move. She never even chased after her feelings of lust. Something she was always ashamed of. But she didn't care. She was beyond the point of no return. On her tiptoes she was flushed against Naruto's warm body. And she kissed him gently on the lips. Her eyes slowly closing along with his. She melted into the kiss as Naruto's arms wrapped quickly around her to support her. She heard him growl as he pressed his lips harder to her soft ones. Her hands ran into his hair and before she knew it Naruto's tongue was attacking hers. Hanada's fingers twisted in his golden locks trying to bring him closer. 
Naruto's other hands wandered to her plump butt, sneaking underneath her dress to grasp it. They both broke apart quickly and Hanada blinked up at him. Naruto was panting and growling, his eyes half-lidded with lust. Those electric touches he felt earlier was making him putty in her hands. She smirked at this. What are you doing to me, woman? He whispered out of breath. Just kissing her was sending him over the top. It was just one kiss. Usually it's him making the women beg. He would be damned if he begged for Hanada. He was the one usually in control. She didn't know either honestly. She had never allowed her lust to take control of her. But she was starting to rather like it. She felt a sense of power. Hanada, her, of all people is making the demon fox weep to his knees. Amazing. She didn't know what to think about it. She watched his eyes as she broke her fingers free from his locks. She dragged a finger down his sweaty neck, feeling the pulse quicken. Her hand shook as she felt the electric-like feel. Her hand finally laid flat on his chest and she felt the warmth under her palm. RGG, Naruto groaned and grabbed Hanada's wrist, holding it none too gently. But it didn't faze her. She blinked up at Naruto in awe. His chest heaving, and his whiskers grew darker and more defined. I want you Hanada. I fucking want you now. He growled. His teeth growing sharper and his tail looked as though it was on fire from how it flared. Hanada brought her face closer to his, her lips not far. Then take me Naruto. She whispered on his lips breathlessly. Chapter 6. Hanada's breath caught in her throat. Her pale eyes looked into the depths of red. It felt like everything had stilled. This beautiful demon fox was in front of her and nothing else. His tail swooshed slowly behind him, his face stunned and frozen. Both their hearts were starting to pick up speed. Are you sure? Naruto kicked himself mentally. He had never asked a woman if she was sure. Why was he asking now? He didn't care about anyone's feelings. But here he was. He should have taken her already, but here he was. He didn't know what to think about Hanada. How he truly felt about her. This was just sex. Plain sex, right? Hanada was surprised as well. She didn't think he'd cared enough to ask. With all the flirting and whatnot. It seemed as though it was just a part of his personality. She felt a surge of joy to know that he cared more than just fucking her. Yes Naruto I am sure. She wrapped her hands around his neck and gave him a quick shy peck on the lips. He slowly began to walk her backwards. I don't make love Hanada. It's okay. Naruto, she blinked quickly he kept waking her backwards with every word he spoke. I am not gentle. He said lowly, the moon that appeared above them caught his sharp canine teeth. His hands were putting pressure on her hips. I can handle it, she whispered, her heart pounding out of her chest. I am not like Tonary. He growled darkly, taking her to the ground with alarming speed. Her back crushed the flowers under her and a gasp escaped her lips. Naruto hovered over her with his hands on either side of her head. One leg was between hers and the other was at her side. He stared at her with his intense eyes. He was holding himself back from ravaging her. He just needed the words. She stared at him for a while, thinking about how she was a bit afraid of the Unkanon, but also curious. She died a hundred times. What more did she have to lose? Hanada lifted her hand to place it upon Naruto's warm cheek. She caressed him with her thumb. He growled and leaned into her hand closing his eyes. I don't want Tonari. I want you Naruto. His eyes peeked at her. Then your wish is my command. My queen. He grabbed her wrists placing them both above her head all in one swift motion. His lips crashed down upon hers. Naruto's canine scrapping her. His knee pressed into her putting pressure on her lower region. She moaned rubbing her bare legs on Naruto's. Their fierce kissing was sending a delicious shockwave throughout their bodies. Naruto couldn't get enough of it. He was drunk with the euphoric feeling. Naruto broke from the kiss and shredded the top part of Hanada's dress, two swipes with his enlarged claws. He was back down attacking Hanada's beautiful breast. Licking and sucking them with a hunger he never felt before. He even took the time to tease a pink nipple. Ah. Hanada moaned arching her back. Her arms wrapped around Naruto's neck. Her eyes closed. Naruto grabbed the last bits of her dress and ripped it off. He trailed down her stomach with his tongue and hot kisses until he reached his prize. Hanada's fingers twisted themselves in his hair as Naruto licked her sacred area. Na and Hanada gasped but couldn't even finish calling his name. 
She wiggled about moaning with abandonment. He grabbed her moving legs to pin her down. He was painfully hard at this point and couldn't take it anymore, and neither could she. M more Naruto, Hanada reached for Naruto in need, her arms outstretched, a tint of red on her cheeks. Naruto groaned, Fuik. He rushed forward attacking Hanada's lips with kisses, while pulling himself out. Their tongues tangled together in a sloppy battle. Hanada was feeling all sorts of things, things she never felt before. She felt oddly strong and full of energy. Lots of energy. She needed something and she would be damned if she did not get it. She pushed Naruto with massive strength, flipping him on his back. Naruto was shocked at how fast she moved. He didn't even see her. He was on his back looking up at Hanada, with a raised brow. Holy shit babe. Naruto grinned, s sorry. I think I got excited. Hanada smiled. Her eyes seemed to glow. The moon shined upon her like a beautiful creature of the night. A trail of blood trickled from her bruised lip. Naruto stared at her in awe. If he didn't keep it together he wasn't even going to last to penetrate her. And Hanada sensed it. She sensed it all. How his body reacted to every jerk. Hanada laid a hand on his chest. A powerful wave rushed over him, it made his skin crawl. His member twitched. Hanada please, he gasped sweating. He bit his lip producing blood. Hanada felt pride and sexy. She smirked. She was in control, and she kind of liked it. Hanada bent over with newfound excitement. Please? Please what Naruto-kun? She leaned over him nuzzling his neck and tracing his chest with a finger. That's all she needed. Naruto growled. You sexy demon. Curse you. He pulled her by the hips trying to force her down upon him but he found her couldn't. A glow of dark energy prohibiting him. Please what? Hanada looked at him with slit eyes, her lashes fluttered innocently. Her heart was beating fast, and so was his. It didn't seem to stop for a second. Fuck fuck fuck. Naruto cursed in his mind. He didn't think she had this type of power. What was she besides an angel? A damn succubus. She was sending him over the edge. He felt helpless almost. Well guess there was a first time for everything. Please Hanada. I need you. He growled up at her. Hanada allowed Naruto to pull her down upon him. He tossed his head back and groaned. Hanada felt like she was in heaven. Her back arched and she moaned. She lifted her hips and slammed down on him repeatedly. Naruto and her caught on to a rhythm and rocked together moaning. Sweat dripped from their bodies. But Naruto would be damned if he let anyone control him. He quickly flipped them over and pounded ruthlessly into her. Hanada threw her arms around his neck moaning his name. Faster. Harder. Oh. She cried with every thrust. They both felt a surge of energy and with a final powerful thrust Naruto stilled inside of Hanada. She felt hot liquid shoot inside her and she screamed with joy at the top of her lungs. Naruto panted above her watching as it appeared Hanada was glowing almost glowing. Her eyes were bright. Out of energy he collapsed on top of her, his head on her breast. They panted for a while trying to catch their breath. Hanada's hand on top of Naruto's head petting his ear. Holy. Shit. Naruto panted. Hanada stared up at the sky feeling, energized. She felt strange but very, very good. She blushed at her behavior. How could she let her lust take control of her like that? But it felt so good. She countered in her mind. She lifted up her hand to stare at it. What was all that? Naruto? But there was no response. She looked down to see Naruto snoring slightly. His strong features had turned into a more softer version. She smiled at him and kissed his forehead. That was the best sex she ever had in her life. With Tonari it was always awkward. She never knew what to do. Compared to what she just did with Naruto her sex before was rather bland. It was always shy kisses, there never seemed to be any real passion. With Naruto there was no holding back. There wasn't any fear. Just raw passion. She hugged Naruto to her breast, thank you Naruto, she whispered. Kau. She looked to the side to see the bird eating the fruit out of the basket she left. She sighed, but looked at the ground near her. It seemed all the flowers had wilted and died around her. She looked to her other side and it was the same. The flowers had died. How strange she thought before closing her eyes to rest. Chapter end thank you for watching.